the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Dear faithful, during this time of year, um, when the church is when the church tells us we need to go to Holy Communion. So we have to go at least once between the beginning of Lent and Trinity Sunday. That's a church law. Of course, when the church says receive communion, she means receive communion worthily. I think we all know that it doesn't help us if we receive communion not having the state of sanctifying grace. That would be a sacrilege. To receive communion worthily, three things are required. First, that our soul be free from any unforgiven mortal sin. Secondly, that we have a good intention for receiving. And thirdly, that we do the minimum fast required by the church, which is one hour before communion. Now, it's not difficult to achieve those things. Forgiveness of mortal sins requires we go to confession, of course. To keep a one-hour fast is easy. Of course, we, we often we encourage people to do the three-hour fast because at least it involves some, some effort. But let's talk a little bit about having a good intention for receiving communion. What the church means here is that we, what desires to motivate us to receive is something supernatural. For example, to unite ourselves with Christ is a good intention. To desire the graces that come from Holy Communion to help us is a good intention. To thank God for already receiving benefits is a good intention. Unworthy motives for receiving communion would be anything that is simply on the natural level or on the human level. For example, I receive just because everybody else does is not a worthy intention. Or I receive so that people don't ask me why I don't receive. That is an unworthy intention. And similar things like that. Dear faithful, let's remind ourselves of what Holy Communion is and the advantages of receiving it worthily in order to help us have a great desire to receive it for the right reasons. I mean, we know Holy Communion is nothing other than the real living body of Jesus Christ. And since we receive his living body, we also receive his body his blood, his soul, and his divinity, because if a body is alive, it's automatically united to the blood and the soul, and in Christ's case, to the divinity. So the entire Son of God comes into us with each Holy Communion. Let's be careful to avoid one error about Holy Communion. I mean, we know that we are unworthy, But so long as we fulfill those three conditions that we mentioned, we should approach the communion rail to receive. There are some who stay away from communion because of venial sins or temptations that they've undergone or turmoil in their soul. And so long as these things do not involve mortal sin, these souls should receive communion. We need to remember the great truth about Holy Communion that St. Pius X taught. He said that we must not think of Holy Communion as a reward for being good. No, Holy Communion is not a reward for being good boys and girls. It is rather the food that we need for our souls and the medicine. We need it to sustain our weak souls and to help us persevere on the path to salvation. 
The danger for us, dear friends, is, is the same as those in, people in today's gospel. That without food, we will faint during the journey. And Jesus takes care of that. He provides food to keep us going. For them, he provided an earthly bread. For us, he gives us a heavenly bread. I am the true bread which comes down from heaven, he said. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. No, we will faint on the way and collapse on the way to eternal life without this bread. He is our spiritual food. He is our remedy. St. Peter, Julian, and Mard said, communion is as necessary for us to sustain our Christian vitality as the vision of God is necessary to the angels to maintain their life of glory. Or you can take St. Catherine of Siena who said, True God and true man, you have left yourself holy to us as food so that we will not fall through weariness during our pilgrimage in this life, but will be fortified by you, our celestial nourishment. Holy Communion, our Lord Jesus Christ himself, is our spiritual food. He sustains us. In fact, receiving Holy Communion worthily wipes away our venial sins. And it does that because it increases our charity. And God, who is is love itself, comes into our soul. And he helps revive our charity and break our disordered attachments to creatures and to ourselves. Because you see, a lower love can only be broken or corrected by a higher love. The lower love is our disordered love for ourselves and for creatures. The higher love is the love of Christ, who gives himself to us in this sacrament and brings his charity into our soul. Let's remember the Holy Eucharist is also a sign of the unity in the church. We are all members of Christ by baptism. And this union becomes closer by receiving communion, the unity amongst ourselves. Because the same life then is in us all. It's the life of God. It's the life of God, the life of Christ is in all of us. Receiving Holy Communion is also called a pledge of eternal glory. That is, it's a, it's a kind of anticipation of eternal glory. It's a foretaste of what God has in store for us in heaven. And this, this is something we should remember. I mean, every time we receive communion worthily, Jesus is telling us, you know, you, you have me now, you experience me now by receiving me. You ex- experience something of what I have prepared for you for all eternity. One final thought. To help us prepare better for communion, we should really just focus on our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, we don't receive some kind of blessed bread. We receive a person who is Jesus Christ. And I think that's what we have to ask ourselves, dear faithful, is to, how do I treat the blessed sacrament? Do I treat it just as a holy thing? Or do I treat it as a real living person who is my Lord and my God? It makes all the difference. So by concentrating on him, we will make much better preparations and better thanksgivings. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen.